dinner in the Lower East Side in Manhattan celebrating Jason's birthday with friends, including Brian and Eliza. And when we sat down at this long table with like 15 other people, uh, Brian and Eliza were like magnets. <laughs> uh, they very quickly sat across the table from each other and it was basically like for the other 15 of us that we were like chaperoning their first date. <laughs> um, they didn't really stop talking to each other. They didn't really speak to anyone else, which was totally fine because it was like magic happening across the table from each other. Um, and they were drawn to each other in a way that like left kind of like zero doubt in my mind that like we would be here at some point in the future. And Brian is someone who, as long as I've known him, has always understood that without connecting to other people, we really have nothing. And that in order to be connected to other people, we have to be humble. And so that means showing up. And I don't mean just showing up like not being a flake, which Brian is not, or showing up um, like showing up on our living room in our at our apartment to sleep on our living room floor, which you did numerous times. Uh, it's also about showing up at the hospital when someone has an emergency and needs help. It is showing up when you have a fight with someone that you love, and someone has to be the first person to say, "I'm sorry that I screwed up." And Brian has always had that maturity and that um, authenticity to show up for me, for everyone in our sort of friend group. He realized long before I did that that was actually the most important part of being close to other people. Um, so I am so happy that in Eliza he has found someone who is going to show up for him. One of the things we all want in life is for our friends to find someone who makes them truly happy. Someone who loves the things that they love and who helps them find new things to love as well. When I finally got up to New York City to spend a weekend with Eliza and Brian, I already knew I would love him because he made Eliza so very happy. We spent a glorious day at the Whitney, seeing the art and then asking Eliza to explain all of it to us. Seeing Brian care about the things Eliza cares about, watching someone love my friend as hard as I love her, these are the things I know we all love about seeing Eliza and Brian together. You're gonna love this family. We've embraced you. You see what our Passovers are like. And uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow night. Eliza, you noted that the early days were so easy that you were confused and certain that you had missed some giant red flag, while Brian, you saw it as a natural progression and for you without a lot of anxiety, not something you were used to <laughs> in romantic endeavors. It just felt obvious, of course. A little over a month after you met was Brian's Super Bowl party, which just as naturally, Eliza ended up co-hosting. And that pretty much sealed things. But then you got that interview for the job in San Francisco from whence you had just come, and you said those magic words, in the short run, we'll figure it out. In the long run, we'll figure it out. 
And thinking that the job wasn't going to pan out, you were about to sign a lease um, on an apartment in Bed-Stuy. And at that moment, you got another interview out here, got the job, and so you relocated in stages. Everything happened quickly, but as you repeated, of course. And here we are today. Dearest Eliza, you and many of those who are here tonight, or today, can attest that I am not someone who very frequently says, uh, words cannot express. <laughs> and yet, and yet standing here, I at least feel that words alone cannot express my joy, my gratitude, my pride, and my comfort. So of course, when words falter, I must turn to math. <laughs> Bear with me. There are an infinite number of <laughs> integers. There are an infinite number of integers. One, two, 73, on and on. If you take the infinite integers and divide it by the infinite integers, you get an infinite number of fractions, of ratios of rational numbers. One third, one fourth, 77, 80 thirds. <laughs> But then there are the irrational numbers. <laughs> numbers like the square root of two and e and pi. Numbers with an infinite number of decimal places. They can never be translated into a fraction of integers. They, in fact, can't be translated at all. Because one fourth is the same as two eighths is the same as 0 0.25, but pi is not equal to anything but pi. 3.14 is just, <laughs> is just an approximation. So, I'm almost done. Between zero and one, there are an infinite number of rational numbers and an infinite number of irrational numbers. And there are more infinities between one and two, between two and three, between one-fifth and two-fifths, between one-billionth and two-billionths. Infinities stacked up against each other, within each other, at once more complex, more intricate, yet no more infinite than they were before. And that is what it's like to be with you. 
To be what I was and yet more. To be a fraction and yet whole. To be infinite and yet to exist intertwined with your infinity. Both of us within an even grander infinity. Sometimes I wake up with the sadness of the days it feels like madness. So what would I do without you? When colors turn to shades of gray with the weight of the world at the end of the day, what would I do without you? A decade goes by without a warning, and there's still a kindness in your eyes. Amidst the questions and the worry, a peace of mind. Always takes me by surprise. And then there is the infinitesimal. <laughs> the tiny probabilities, the rational probabilities, things that you could know. The chance that Jason and I would room together, <laughs> times the chance that you would go to law school with Nancy, times the chance that I would move to New York, the chance that we would both be at that dinner on a cold December. And then there are the irrational probabilities. <laughs> the ephemeral odds that you would be the unique you that you were on that day. And that I would be the particular me. And that between us would be a palpable spark. On and on this chain of happenstances some fairly likely, some exceedingly rare, leading from me to you, to us, to here. We call this chain Beshert, <laughs> fate, because we don't have another name for it. <laughs> and I don't believe in preordained destiny, but being with you makes me understand why people do. Because like infinities upon with infinities and within infinities, the math just doesn't make sense. <laughs> just doesn't compute. So it may not be magic, but let's just call it magic. Because <laughs> what else can I call this feeling, this certainty, this delightful entanglement? After every interesting, funny, sad, or surprising thing that happens to me, I say to myself, I can't wait to tell Eliza. I can't wait to see you smile, to feel your soothing hand on my shoulder, to hear you laugh. When I proposed, standing atop Tank Hill as the wind tried to blow us down, <laughs> tumbling into Coal Valley, I told you how grateful I was to have been on so many mediocre internet dates. <laughs> because it made it utterly obvious how different you were and how different we were. And that was just another way of saying that I had forgotten that there was magic. That there was such a thing as magic. And I had begun to forget that infinities exist within infinities. The word love is but a single integer to the infinity of what I feel for you. You make me feel like myself. You make me feel like I deserve you. You make me feel calm amid chaos. You make me feel certain amid uncertainty. You make me feel loved even in those moments when I've forgotten how to love myself. Behind us is our ketubah the contract we drafted together, the obligations and intentions we have signed our names to. And to all those promises, I will add these. I will remember the math of the infinite and the infinitesimal. <laughs> I will appreciate how lucky I am and we are. I will always be in awe of how complex and boundless you are, and we are. I will never stop being stunned by how ineffably, amazingly surprising it is 
to have met you, the precise you, the infinite you, and how grateful I am that you are you and that you are here. walking down the street. Bundled up to our ears in a frigid East Village. You asked me how I like living in New York. And I said I loved it because it was the only city whose anxiety level rose to meet my own. <laughs> <laughs> you laughed through your scarf and your eyes scrunched up at the corners the way they do, I know now, when you're deeply, genuinely amused by something or someone. And I felt in that small, fleeting moment a little bit of the magic of what it's like to be truly seen by you. You see, I always secretly suspected that to be really lovable, I would have to be less than myself. Quiet or less opinionated, just less. But you, you don't want me to be any different. And you certainly don't want me to be any less. You remind me constantly, in small and big ways, that you're here to witness my whole real self. All the messy bits, or as the case may be, hyper-organized color-coded bits. <laughs> <laughs> included. <laughs> that in fact, that's where the magic is. You turned to me in a speeding crosstown cab once, interrupting some sort of impassioned monologue about politics or art or who knows what and said, with those same scrunched up eyes from our first night, I like that you're a nerd even though you dress pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped and laughed, and we continued our conversation. But inside, the truth of that statement and the joy with which you had delivered it actually stunned me. Again, I felt that flutter of magic of being really seen and understood by you which meant so much more now that I was starting to really know you too. Then, nine months after we first met, I anxiously asked you how you would feel about moving back to San Francisco barely a year after you had left. I braced for the impact of disappointment or disagreement, but instead you calmly said, in the short run we'll figure it out, and in the long run we'll figure it out. Just like that. No hesitation, no concern or complaint. It was only later that I realized <laughs> It was only later that I realized it wasn't that you already had a plan or that you knew exactly how it was going to work out. Rather, it was that you had an absolute faith in our ability together to make a plan for anything that came our way and a clear and unshakable belief that together was now obviously the only way to be. That faith has buoyed me ever since. You are my person, not because you make it all better, but because I know that you will work with me as my equal partner forever to figure out how we can forge a shared path forward. You are my greatest champion and my strongest support. You delight in my successes and you share compassionately in my disappointments. You encourage my greatest ambitions and are sensitive to my deepest fears. Your kindness continually astonishes me. It shows me how I want to be in the world. And your curiosity makes every experience brighter, more vibrant, and more alive. If the last two years have proven anything, 
It's that life is so much more unpredictable, holds so much more joy, and offers so much more depth than I ever had imagined. Brian, I love you with all that I am. And I'm so profoundly grateful to be starting this new part of our adventure together. You have shown me that love is not luck or fate. It's not Bashir, it's not the universe, and it's not magic. As pretty as it is to think so. Love, rather, is the practice of really bothering to know somebody and allowing that person to know you. So today, I promise to continue to pay attention, to listen to what you're saying and what you're not, to stay radically amazed at the mensch of a man that you are. And I promise to show you who I am, even when who I am is imperfect, because your love has convinced me that that's exactly what you want to see. As others have said, we knew the day we met you that you were the woman for Brian to share his life with. It was a plain and simple fact, like joining together two pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Seeing each of you and seeing you in each other's company that day, it wasn't clear which of you had a brighter gleam in your eyes, but it surely was there for each of you. You've dazzled us with your smarts and your beauty and your confidence and your curiosity and your caring heart. And all of this is in addition to the Linzer torch. <laughs> <laughs> More we could not have asked for. And when you visited with us in Plymouth, where we live, the home of the Plymouth Rock, uh, we wanted to yell to all, yes, you are the one that makes Brian a more complete and better person. When you both spent breakfast time comp completing the New York Times crossword puzzle, <laughs> and I know folks, that's completing, not just attempting, <laughs> you often knew the answers before he did, and you more than held your own when there was ensuing discussion. <laughs> You're being Brian's intellectual equal, will bring you both a level of equality important to any fulfilling relationship. All told, we feel blessed to have you as our daughter-in-law. And kudos again to your parents for having made you, to raise you to the wonderful person that you are. And to our son Brian, the past year has been an enlightening experience for us. We've watched you further your connection to Eliza, your life soulmate, all that while showing the growth and maturity needed to land on your feet so successfully in your career and your move to California, where you've been able to establish an enriching life with all the new friends. We could not be more proud. introduced to Brian's parents, Lois and Perry, 
many months ago at a lovely little Manhattan restaurant. Which had been carefully chosen by Eliza and Brian to be perfectly suited for such a momentous occasion. <laughs> we could instantly see how warmly Eliza was being welcomed into the Carfunkel family. We could tell that night that all of us shared the same feeling about this match. It seemed so right. Lois and Perry, it's clear that you have raised a man that has an abundance of wonderful qualities. Yes. <laughs> Among them, he's thoughtful, generous, and accomplished. He's a good man. We know how proud you are, Brian, and you should be. It has been delightful getting to know you both, and we look forward to deepening the relationship between our families. It's also been remarkable to, to find how easily Brian has become a member of our family. He's already been part of many family events, and we're pleased that he wasn't scared away even when we asked him to double buckle. <laughs> After being thoroughly vetted by family and friends, we are happy to report that he has passed all tests, frisbee throwing included. So when, when Eliza first described Brian to us, we knew instantly that she had found someone to share her life with that challenged and appreciated her. The fact that he cherishes and loves our daughter is abundantly clear. We are beyond thrilled that Brian is now an official member of our family with all the duties and responsibilities that that entails. One thinks of all that you might be teaching your children, but Eliza has always taught us so much more. She's taught us about the value of persistence, about bravery, and about always rising to the challenge. We have learned about the unabashed joy of parenting such an amazing human being and continue to be awed by her inner strength, her insights, and the care and the love that she shows her family and friends. You would think that after 37 years of marriage, we would have some words of wisdom to impart. What we can say is, take the good with the bad. The rough, <laughs> the rough with the smooth. The ups with the downs. <laughs> and always remember the love that you feel for each other today. And now, please raise your glass as we offer this toast. May you both be favored with the future of your choice. And may you live to see a thousand reasons to rejoice. Mazel tov. I was late for work on Monday, Tuesday she never called. Wednesday I'm here, I work my fingers to the bone. Thursday worries all around me Friday I can barely breathe I need a cure for the hurt that's ailing me You feel no pain when your feet start moving Just let loose and you feel alright Just keep it going all night Troubles, everybody's been alone There's nobody here that could make it on their own 